Hey cruisers, Joe here, and as you can tell, I'm not in the studio this week. I'm actually in Amsterdam, and Matt is actually sick this week, so he's not going to be doing the show, but what we're going to be doing for you instead is giving you a replay of our Cuba show. So uh, I'll see you guys in two weeks. Hope you guys have an amazing uh, two weeks. Until then, see ya. Be sure to have your questions ready for Haley and Matt. Hey, cruisers, we have a jam-packed show for you tonight. We're going to be taking a deep dive into Cuba with our guest, Haley, who was on Royal Caribbean's first sailing to Cuba and is here to tell us all about the place and anything special she had to do differently for the sailing. Uh, my new co-host, Matt Hochberg, is going to be here, and he's going to be talking about the Symphony of the Seas. And we have another crazy complaint story. And, of course, as always, we have another feature photo sent in by one of you. So stay tuned. And have your questions ready because this is Cruise Week TV Live. cruisers i'm joe and together with my co-host matt we bring you the fun and information on cruising while matt from royal caribbean blog is definitely a seasoned cruiser i would still consider myself to be a newbie and um, so i'm very much looking forward to learning a bunch tonight from both our guest haley and from matt but before i talk about haley and her super exciting trip to cuba i want to tell you guys first about good memories travel now in the past, we have talked about the benefits of using a travel agent to book your cruise. You get about the same great rates as booking yourself, and uh, you may get onboard credit or a customer reward, which is like um, having cash to spend on your cruise. So uh, also travel agents, they enjoy planning and helping you with weddings, honeymoons, and now with more people choosing a cruise as part of their wedding or honeymoon, it pays to use them. Debbie can work directly with the cruise line to organize onboard parties, events, and the service, which is one less thing that you have to worry about. They're fully licensed by the CLIA, which of course stands for Cruise Lines International Association, and they have also been earmarked by Disney. So you know that you're going to be great getting great personal service and no waiting to get a hold of them, which is very important. You call their phones and your travel agent will pick it up. No voice routing, no long message trees to have to navigate through convenient. They specialize in handling every aspect of your group cruise, family getaway, or that family reunion that you've been wanting to plan. Imagine letting someone else do all the work while you get to relax. Debbie can also take card points, so if you have, say, an American Express rewards card, you can use to pay the, uh, you can use the points to pay for your next cruise. So I wish I would have known that before booking my last cruise. Um, also, Debbie also plans various Christian-related group cruises. Their God is Good group cruise is coming up, so be sure to check on that. Um, check that out on their website. They handle, of course, cruises for all cruise lines, um, Carnival, Royal, uh, MSC, Norwegian, and more all over the world. So give Debbie Smith with Cruise Planners a call to see what they can do for you. It doesn't cost you a thing to check them out and uh, get some cruise rates. You're going to be glad you did. Debbie can be reached by phone. Just give her a call at area code 321-338-2953 or, of course, through their website at www.goodmemoriestravel.com and let them know that you heard about them here on Cruise Week TV. So, that being said, let's dive into Cuba and find out just what it's like behind those amazing photos that we've been seeing on the internet. Haley, welcome to the show and welcome back from your recent cruise to Cuba. Hey. How are you tonight? Good, good, good. I'm very excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, we're excited to have you. It's, Cuba hasn't always been a very accessible destination to us in the United States. And now with Cuba being such an accessible destination, I, I'm excited to hear what one of the first sailors that went there has to say about it. What do you, what do you think? You booked a cruise to Cuba. Like Now, when you booked a cruise to, to Havana, Havana was the port, right? Yes. Okay, so when you booked when you booked a cruise to Cuba, what like 
what was going through your head? Like, I mean, it, you, were you ex like super excited that you finally get to see a destination that we haven't been able to travel to for a long time? Or what was the, uh, what was the um, emotion that you had? So funny thing about this, I actually had Empress booked two months before it turned into Cuba, actually. It was a really good price. I was looking for something to take my daughter on because she hadn't been on a cruise in almost two years. Yeah. Um, just something kind of small, inexpensive and whatnot. So when we got the email, we had an option to stay on this cruise, but we'd have to buy the $75 visa um, or they were offering onboard, uh, onboard credit if we switched to a different cruise. So myself having a travel blog and whatnot, I'm like, we are going to Cuba. I do not care if I have to mortgage my house, we're doing it. I want to see it. <laughs> so I was very excited. <laughs> Don't care if you have to mortgage a house. That's actually quite a strong, uh, quite, quite a strong, <laughs> headstrong emotion to, to go to, uh, to just to go to Cuba. That's uh, but I mean, it, it wasn't worth it. Did you have a good time? Absolutely. No, it was great. It's very, um, it's very different from some of the other ports because I feel sometimes some of the islands, because I've been on, I think about 14 cruises myself, some of the islands kind of blur together sometimes, but this was just, it was completely different. Yes, you know, it kind of has very similar uh, architecture to San Juan, but just the feel is different. Um, the people are different. The energy in the street is just very different compared to um, other ports that I've been to. Well, I'd imagine it would be very different. Uh, it, it's, it, it seems like it, it's been, it, it wouldn't have as much touristy, as many touristy things built up in it as like, let's say the Bahamas where they expect a cruise ship to come in like every single day. Uh, Havana hasn't always been a port that's been open um, to, to cruise ships from here. So it's, I, I imagine that it wouldn't be like as many people trying to sell you things and, uh, and as you're just like walking by, but, um, it, Tom Willis wants to know, we, we're getting questions in from the audience now. This one comes okay. from Tom Willis. He's asking, did you get any cigars while you were in Cuba? I sure did. I had to buy, um, cigars from my mother's new husband. Um, and I was told that Cohiba is the best kind that you can get. So I got a box. I don't have it in here with me. Um, it's about this big, has three big, long, fat cigars in it. And that cost about $86 in the Cuban convertible pesos, which is about dollar for dollar on average with the U.S. dollar. I didn't realize that it would be so uh, so easy to convert. But that's uh, that's good to know. I um, have another question in coming from, this one comes from Barbara J. Valentine. She wants to know, do you have to stay with an approved tour to be in Cuba? No, oddly enough, um, what I would suggest for a first timer is I did a half day AM walking tour with Royal Caribbean, um, which was nice because it kind of let me get my grounds first because it's, it's kind of hard to find information online still about what Havana's like and, you know, kind of how the U.S. citizens are going to be perceived a little bit more. So I did this half day tour. And then after that, once I had my grounds of where I was, um, I spent the rest of the day until almost uh, last call, you know, boarding call for the ship wandering about. Wow. Okay. So now earlier when you were talking about Cuba, you were explaining to us about a visa. Could you ex go into that a little bit further? Explain the, uh, explain the visa process to me. So typically speaking, when you go to different ports, the cruise lines, you know, kind of set up all the, you know, quote unquote, visa type work for other islands, but Cuba mandates a $75 visa be purchased and that you do have to have a passport, even if it's a closed loop cruise, you do have to have a passport to travel there. Um, you get charged on date one of your sailing for your visa. So when you're going through um, and handing out your normal paperwork on embarkation day, you have to check what kind of tour you're doing or if you're staying on the ship or what your plan is. And they hand you your visas on embarkation day. Guard those with your life. Because also when you have to fill them out, um, if you can't cross out or make any mistakes. If you make any mistakes on these visas, you have to buy another $75 visa. That is... I, that's unheard of to me. I didn't, I didn't know that that would, that, uh, well, because I'm so used to using my passport to get in and out of the country. So it's like, I'm not, 
thought about like having to i've never experienced that myself having to file a, a visa as well but then no you're only there for but you're only you're only there for such a short period of time and it's it's different so are you able it, to it use, is extremely different <laughs> yeah if it's of course it seems like it um another question coming in this one comes from uh beth uh i'm hoping i don't butcher this last name beth forgive me if i do beth Eatengoff. <laughs> Um, are you, if she wants to know, are you able to use your credit cards in Cuba? No, no credit cards. Um, and you'll read that a lot online. I was surprised to see in the store that I ended up getting cigars from. It was a government run store. You'll see there is a mix of both there. Um, there was a sticker sign for MasterCard and Visa, which was kind of a surprise to me because everything that I had read, um, said no. And then, um, the shop was getting ready to close down so the women and they were kind of a little less than inclined to uh do that process but typically speaking no cash reigns supreme well i mean that's normally how it is but I, I was kind of surprised like when i went to the bahamas my credit cards actually worked until they decided to block them out because they saw i was another another country and they're like oh that's that's not it's something not. that <laughs> yeah and yeah they said that's oh that's suspicious we're gonna block that card now so yeah, but um, okay. So now you sent us a video earlier. Um, we're gonna, I think we're gonna play that video. Let's play that video that Haley sent us okay. from her trip to Cuba. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> well, that picture, that, um, that was a fun video, I think. That was a very fun video. Um, it was, uh, you know what it really reminded me of? What, just like the images in the video? It was like a trip back in time. All the cars in there seemed like they were like super like vintage. <laughs> like, I, I saw Extremely. one really, yeah, I saw... I, I saw one in there that was just like it was beautiful like it was green like my car green but it was like older and i yes. I, I kind of wanted it <laughs> and, and i was sending my like, dad pictures of that and he was like <laughs> wow that was so pretty all right so we have more questions in for our viewers um oh, this one comes from beth eaton golf again she wants to know are you allowed to get off the ship without being on a tour or is that uh forbidden <laughs> You are allowed to get off the ship, but you would have to qualify under, I think there's 13. And I know on Royal Caribbean blog, he has the full layout as well as royalcaribbean.com. You have to meet a certain category, be it journalism, educational, religious. Um, there's a bunch of those. Like I debated about going under the journalism 
flag, but especially being the first cruise going there, I wasn't really ready to take that risk just yet. But I think if I went back again, I think I could get away with doing a journalism flag. Okay. So um, our next one comes in from uh, Ken Kozak. Uh, does he, he wants to know if there's any uh, food or vendor, food vendors or restaurants in the area of the pier. The area of the pier does have a little cafe. Literally, you walk across the street in that Plaza de San Francisco is where you end up. And there is a little cafe right there. I walked back to Plaza Vieja and had lunch. Um, that's on my blog, too. I cannot recall the restaurant name because I was really hangry by the time I got there. Angry, good um, word. But I put in the directions of where it was. Because <laughs> this pineapple chicken that I had there was like... It was unlike anything. It was, I, and I'm not like a sweets and meats kind of person. I like savory, but this was really, really good. And there's a little ice cream vendor that I think I saw a picture you had of mine scrolling um, that has ice cream that's made out of like coconut water, coconut sugar, and like coconut fat. So it's actually dairy free. So if anybody has a lactose problem, try it out. I wouldn't say it's the best ice cream that I ever had, but it's different. And I think it's just something you need to try. And it was two convertible pesos. So. That's and I, I I'm glad she I'm glad that question was asked because that is one of my favorite like that's one of my top things about any destination that we uh, talk about on the show is uh food I love food so <laughs> so I'm glad we covered that I do it's any like anywhere you you go you have to try the local food my I, my personal opinion on that is you know you have to try some of the some of what the locals have so um yeah that's that's uh that's I'm glad that yeah, the contributors in the Bahamas. Yes, exactly, exactly. So or lionfish fingers, which are really, which I found out are I really yes. like too. So, anyway, uh, another question from Barbara J. Valentine. She wants to know: Did they uh, tell you why they have why the locals have one currency, and the non-locals have another? And where did you change it? Okay, so I'm gonna break into kind of a bigger picture on currency and hope this answers other potential questions on it. So, <clears throat> excuse me. The US dollar gets charged a 10% conversion fee in Cuba when you convert it over. So a lot of people beforehand were changing the euros or Canadian dollars because euros and Canadian dollars don't um, get subject to that 10% change fee. So I flew out of Buffalo and my hotel is 10 minutes from the border. I hopped the border because I had $200 that I wanted to exchange and that was 20 bucks. <laughs> 20 bucks is 20 bucks. Yeah, um, and I got my Canadian and came back over. So right after you go through customs and then there's a security checkpoint after that in the terminal, there is a gift shop, a couple of gift shops and vendors. <clears throat> and then just down the hall a little bit further is the currency exchange. And that's where you can exchange right there. They did tell us that some of the hotels could exchange, but um, I went to exchange some currency at a hotel and they told me that they couldn't do it. So I would just say do it in the port and don't frustrate yourself any bit more. Um, as to the question if, you know, the reasoning for the two um, currencies, is the basic thing that we were told is it's a government sanctioned thing. The government does not want other currencies per se floating around and they like to manage what their citizens has because being a communist government, the government gives you what you need. Wow, that's a uh... I, I didn't expect it. I mean, you, you never think about that when you're, well, I mean, I wouldn't think about it right off the bat. Like, and I never think about um, how the governments work differently. I guess it's, it's something that I, I kind of think about. It's always there in the back of my head, but it's not something that I always think about up front. So yeah, yeah. like you said, how it's kind of like going back in time. It's very true. Like there's actually, there's very, very few, and it's more recent Wi-Fi hotspots. Like you can't just hop on Wi-Fi, for example, in Cuba, you have to go buy a, Wi-Fi card and then hop on the internet and the internet speeds from what I'm told are extremely slow. I mean, it's still a very uh, developing kind of thing and they're very um, controlling of what they want their citizens to have, see and use. That's so different. That's like culture shock right there. <laughs> we have a question like... coming in uh, from Periscope. Wandy too wants to know, was the walking very strenuous? On this tour, no. I know on Royal Caribbean's tour, it says that the Heritage um, tour is strenuous, but we maybe walked for about an hour and a half, and I had a six-year-old in tow with me, um, and then my husband actually has a wedged vertebrae in his upper back from a car accident that we were in earlier this year, 
And neither of them really had a problem doing that kind of a walk because after that point, and it doesn't say this in the tour, but we hopped on a bus <laughs> and then we got to go to a restaurant and sample mojitos, Cuban coffee, um, rum. We got a cigar to take with us. So no, I didn't think it was. Wow. Okay. So uh, our next question comes in from Tom Willis. He wants to know uh, what are the locals like in Cuba? Very, very friendly, um, very laid back. One thing we were told on our tour, because we were there on a Sunday, so if you're going to be there on a Sunday, be prepared for especially things in the morning not to be open just yet, um, and a lot of stores won't open on Sundays, but they're just very laid back, very friendly, and very curious. Well, it's good to know about the stores, because if, if I'm going to a foreign country, definitely I'm going to want to check out the shops, so I'll make sure, make note if I ever go to Cuba, don't go on a Sunday. <laughs> yes. Our tour guide told us that uh, Cubans are kind of lazy. They don't get out of bed till almost noon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I fit right in. I could just right. fit there then. I don't get up to almost noon. Most days, I try not to. Uh, if I have to work, <laughs> I do. Uh, so, um, this next question that we have coming in, this is from Michael Franklin Poole. Would you ever do a land vacation in Cuba? I absolutely would. I actually am planning one. I know what's a land vacation, but... Um, there's so much more on this island that I've dug and discovered. There's actually a really cool national park um, on the southern side of the island that has beautiful waterfalls and lagoons that I want to go check out. Um, actually, Milton Hershey's mansion is about 40 minutes away from Havana. There's some very beautiful untouched beaches. So I think it's, uh, it's warrant of a land vacation. <laughs> I understand that. Yeah, definitely. It seems like, well, because it's such a big island, I would think uh, you'd, you'd definitely want to travel a little bit more there, too. And plus, if you stay there, <laughs> like, let's say you stay overnight at a hotel, you kind of get to check out, see if they have any nightclubs going on over there in Havana. I hear that's, uh, they have Absolutely. some pretty hot nightlife. The Tropicana Club. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. So, um, Alex Coffin wants to know, was there air conditioning available? And I'm thinking he might mean on the tour, maybe? Or... I'm not sure. That's a the bus had air conditioning, but okay. the places that I went, like where I ate lunch and stuff, did not have air conditioning. Nor did the shops that I went in. Really? Like none of the buildings really? had air conditioning? <laughs> no. Wow. And I mean, you'll kind of see as you go through those tours, and you'll see it. And you saw it in that video. The way that their electricity wires are run are a little scary, <laughs> but. Um, no, there's not a lot of electricity unless you're possibly one of the bigger hotels, but I noticed a lot of the smaller hotels that were in Havana had their doors wide open. I mean, it was a warm day. I think it got up to like 84 degrees and it was kind of warm. <laughs> yeah, 84 yeah. degrees is kind of warm. How do they manage that without air conditioning? That's crazy. Wow. I know. I get, you know, here in Florida, it's like it, we, we get a little bit above 80 and it's like we were, we're, we're blasting the AC throughout every building. Oh my goodness, I didn't, did not realize that it, I wouldn't want to be there on a hot day, I guess, with yeah. in a crowd. That's for my friends and I just did our hashtag first world problems. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good hashtag for that. Oh, oh. <laughs> Excuse me, my gosh, that's, that was the, uh, my air conditioning in my car went out, I'm freaking out. Um, right. <laughs> Ah, oh, goodness. So, Matt, uh, we're going to go to Matt from uh, our um, for, from uh, Royal Caribbean. I want to know if he has any questions now for Haley. Haley, what's going on? I just wanted to know, what was your favorite part of the yeah. tour? I know you stopped at a lot of different places. What what part of the tour did you like the best? Um, I, I liked the walking portion of our tour because there was that bus tour portion in the restaurant and stuff where we had to sample. Just because all the plazas are so colorful. And there's just so much history, a lot of life, and just a lot of good people watching. Absolutely. I mean, it's got to be so cool to be part of that culture, especially early on here before it be, before the Diamonds International show up. And before Starbucks gets there. Well, yeah. I wouldn't mind Starbucks, but Diamond <laughs> International, yeah, that can wait. Don't you want yes. your free pair of Tanzanite earrings? <laughs> <laughs> They're a limited edition, you know, collector's <laughs> items. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got some questions coming in. Uh, we got one from Alex Kaufman. She, or I'm sorry, uh, this one's from, from Periscope. It's Wandy too. She wants to know if the locals there speak English. 
A lot of them do, um, but if you could pick up a little bit of Spanish along your way, I find that people are a lot more open to helping you if you're trying a little bit on your end. Like, I mean, my husband knows necesito un cerveza. Oh, definitely. That's an important <laughs> phrase. <laughs> Although I learned this too, you have to understand when they're asking you what kind of cerveza you want, because otherwise they're just going to stand there and stare at you. And then you'll just standing there staring back at them. So I've learned. <laughs> yes, no, I mean, I think if you just try a little bit, it's not hard to figure things out. Just little things like uh, quanto costo is how much, you know, how much is this kind of thing? Just little things to show that you're trying. Yeah, I can understand that. So Ron Hiller asks, uh, was there a long line at the currency exchange uh, since you had a bus bunch of passengers on the ship that needed to do it? So to my currency exchange story, um, we were told when we met up in Bolero's Lounge to wait until after the tour to exchange our currency. That ended up wreaking a bit of havoc because after the fact in a lot of shops not being open, we couldn't buy certain things so their currency wasn't exchanged. And there will be some places, like the one place we stopped at, the women were taking US dollars and that's actually against the law there. So I know I don't want to get tangled up in something like that. So by the time I went back to the port, which was around one o'clock, there really wasn't a line, but I don't think there'd be a chance for a big line because it takes such a long time to get through customs and then that security checkpoint. I mean, we waited in line for 20 minutes for customs. So I don't think it would be that big of a line. It didn't look it when we went through. See, that would be something that I'd be worried about for sure. Um, uh, uh, did they go, no, did they go over any rules with you, like uh, about things that might be illegal in Cuba that we think of in America as not like, I mean, there's like, like it's no big deal over here, but it's a big deal over there kind of thing. Not as much things that were illegal, just if you were going to go off and venture on your own, just kind of keep a notebook and write down where you were, just in case um, you get questioned about it. Um, and it's just, in essence, it's more of just like, don't do anything stupid. Like, don't insult people. <laughs> like, just be a decent human being. <laughs> that's that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good little guideline to live by or right. to travel by <laughs> even. Yeah. Absolutely. Don't be a jerk. Um, <laughs> all right. So, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Hey, come on now. Yeah, you, like, I love the video you took in Cuba and I love, and, and I'm glad that you, you, uh, you were there to take that video. Cause I've had, um, I've had lots of questions myself about Cuba. So I'm glad you came on the show tonight. I'm glad you were able to answer one last thing. What, what advice would you give to future Cuba cruisers after you've been there? After I've been there, um, cause I did a couple posts. So if anybody's like curious, I did a 10 minute version of the walking tour. If anybody wants to see more of that, but, um, my biggest advice would be to exchange your currency right at the port. Like I know they said to wait till after, but that was stressful. <laughs> I would just go and do it. Um, definitely bring a camera. And the biggest thing is just bring an open mind. These people live under a very different, um, government than we're used to. There's some people that are a fan of it and there is some people that are not and they'll gladly tell you so. You're going to see beautiful parts of um, Old Havana is what it's called, but keep in mind as you walk back further and further, you're going to see that, you know, there are some people that do live in poverty and you may see people that, you know, come up and play a song and hope that you'll give them a tip just like in any other country, but just realize that's how they make a living and they live on the equivalent of about 25 us dollars a month and i mean a little extra goes a long way wow thank you harley so much now you can be reached <laughs> at your your blog where i'm told that you have even more amazing photos of cuba and some videos <laughs> um that's uh, yes, haley with a flare.com haley with a flare.com yeah. so go check that out for yourself matt do you have any more questions for haley before we let her go no, Haley, that was wonderful. A really, really cool uh, insight into what it's like to go into Cuba. I, I know I can't wait to get there myself. It's exciting. I hope everybody tries it. It is really different. Well, I hope I get a chance to try it as well. So, guys, be sure to visit her blog, HaleyWithAFlare.com. Haley, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I greatly appreciate it, and I, great, and I, I, learned, I learned so much. I really did. So, Thanks so much for having me. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> cheers. I'm looking forward to cruising to Cuba one day now.
Oh, goodness. Jira is a rat to drink. All right. So, I want to let you know that uh, this should, <laughs> and all the wonderful, this show and all the, one, all the wonderful abilities that we have to bring in guests remotely would not be possible at the level that we do it without vMix. vMix, in case you didn't know, is a live production software that powers our live show and many, many other high-end productions, from church services to football games and more. And live productions run on vMix. So uh, what our producer Bird really liked when he was trying to improve our show was that they actually give you a full 60-day trial of everything. That is a way that you can test everything out risk-free before you buy it for a full two months. Then they have systems starting for just $350. So if you're going to do any sort of serious live streaming, you need vMix. Try it at vMix.com today. So... Now, our crazy complaint segment. Our crazy complaint this week is uh, served up from f a fine community at the Cruise Critic where we asked people what the craziest complaint was that they have ever heard. So this one was sent in by, I'm um, hoping I'm not butchering this name, Buckham or Butchham, I'm not sure. All right. So our crazy complaint this week uh, an American lady returned from a shore visit to Acropolis in Athens, that's Athens in Greece in case you don't know, with multiple complaints. I'd like to apologize for all Americans before I, uh, the, who don't know about these complaints first. First, she complained that it was still under construction. Second of all, she complained that it was not by the beach. Third, she complained that the service was not in compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act. And then, she complained that it's ramshackle. I think there needs to be a test before you're allowed to leave the country and embarrass us like that in other countries. Lady, you are giving us a bad name. I promise to other countries, anyone from any other country that might be watching out there, I want to promise that we're not all like that. It's only like 79% of us that are, I mean, that are not like that. God, please. I can do math. I really can. Mm. Ugh. Anyway, now that that's been said, uh, I'm excited to have my new co-host with me tonight, Matt Hotchberg from the Royal Caribbean Vlog, and most definitely, we can call him an expert on two things. One, being all things Royal Caribbean, and the other is his love and expertise of the menu at Sabor on, at Sabor on the ships. So. Matt, just how many cruises have you been on now? Joe, what's up, man? Uh, 25? It's really not that much in the grand scheme of cruises in terms of people who cruise a lot, but it's it's up there. It's more than three times the amount I've been on, Matt, for sure. So, <laughs> so now, what, what do you have new to tell us about the Symphony of the Seas? I've been looking forward to this all night. Yeah, Symphony of the Seas, of course, is Royal Caribbean's next new cruise ship. It's uh, coming out uh, in April 2018, and I don't know about you, but I mean, I love new ships. The idea when we get these, you know, little hints and teasers about what's to come. As a cruiser, it's just, you know, this is like, this is like, you know, it's the equivalent of cruising Christmas, right? You're getting a ton of new stuff coming at you. You know they're getting the latest and greatest, and I love latest and greatest. I love new innovations. I love new toys on there, and with new ships... It's always cool. And what's really interesting to me is we saw what Royal Caribbean did with its uh, Harmony of the Seas. And we should mention, by the way, let me back up for a second. Symphony is the fourth Oasis class ship, and Harmony of the Seas was the third Oasis class ship. And when they launched Symphony last year, uh, they added a lot to that. And I was like, whoa, okay, this is not going to just be another version of the ship. So uh, Symphony, I think, rightfully so, is going to have quite a bit of its own that's going to make it dist distinguish itself from the other class, from the ships in the class, and also the rest of the industry. And that is really cool. I'm really looking forward to uh, doing that. So I thought we'd talk about Symphony of the Seas, because who doesn't want to talk about that new hotness, right? Exactly. No, exactly. And, 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 and I, I, like, I, I've been on, now I've been on, like, two Royal Caribbean ships. I've been on the Enchantment, and uh, the Enchantment was probably one of my favorite ones, because I, I learned how they split that one down the middle. But now, yeah, cool. yeah, I did. Yeah, I thought so too. And it was like, I, I, I could almost see, like, I mean, I, I tried to figure out where they did it. It was hard to figure it out, but a couple people had to help me with it to see where the, uh, where the split was actually done. 
But um, yeah, that's, that's uh, so. What are they? What, what's all new that they they're going to be adding to this one? You know, they haven't given us too much information about it. Royal Caribbean likes to spread out the information. This is like marketing 101, right? They like to make the announcement like, hey, it's coming, and you'll have to stay tuned for it. It's, it's a really good tease, as it were. Um, <clears throat> Symphony will be arriving in April 2018. She's going to sail in Europe first, and then come over to the United States in November, and then begin sailing from our new to Port Miami. Actually, Royal is building a brand new cruise terminal in Port Miami. So uh, you can, uh, it's going to be, it looks really cool in and of itself, the port terminal. So to have this brand new ship coincide with this brand new terminal, this is really cool. And and um, for those keeping score at home, Royal Caribbean, when they first launched the Oasis class ship, so Oasis of the Seas, and then subsequently Lure of the Seas, they built a brand new terminal for that, for that ship in Fort Lauderdale, Port Everglades, Terminal 18. So we're getting a brand new terminal with Symphony of the Seas, and that's setting the table for already. Now, we haven't talked anything on board the ship, but this is not a cheapo, like, all right, let me just roll out one new ship and kind of, you know, have it out there. If they're building a new cruise terminal, they're going all for it. This is going to be a pretty big deal. Well, generally, generally anything Royal Caribbean does is pretty, it's, it's, it's pretty impressive, I have to say, from what I've seen on their ships. Um, I've been fairly impressed with it, like everything that they've that they've done. Now, with the new with the new terminals, are they are they slowly kind of redoing all the terminals? You know what it is, uh, Joe. A lot of it has to do with the fact that they are, um, but the, because the the older terminals can't accommodate a ship the size of the Oasis class. I mean, we're talking about a ship that is two hundred thirty thousand gross tons. Uh, it has it's two hundred fifteen and a half feet wide and 1,188 feet long. I mean, there is nothing that comes close to the Oasis class ships. And so a lot of terminals and a lot of ports can't handle them. And so <clears throat> for a place like Miami to be able to take that kind of traffic, they need a new terminal. So this is win-win for this is win-win for Port of Miami because they get obviously the newest cruise ship in the world. They can get a lot more tax dollars coming through. And it's win-win for Royal Caribbean because they're getting a new terminal. And this helps, you know, just kind of get a lot more attention, right? I mean, for Royal Caribbean, it's as much sales as it is marketing, and that all kind of ties in together there. So it seems to be a pretty good partnership. You know, it, 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 just by talking about the new terminals, I've been seeing people just like popping up on our uh, through our Facebook chat telling us that they can't wait to see the new terminals, that they love that they, they love some of the new terminals that are going in too. So uh, that's, uh, and, uh, that's a good thing too. Like, I mean, I, the terminal is not like the first thing that I always think about, but it does kind of make a difference uh, in the first uh, impression of the uh, cruise line. So I've seen myself on the few cruises that I've been on. But um, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. The, they're calling it the crown of Miami. It's a 170,000 square foot terminal. It is, Roker is calling it, and I'm reading verbatim here, the most innovative cruise facility in the United States. So it's no glorified, you know, warehouse in which you board. This is really, it makes a big difference when you see them in action, because of course you're talking about thousands, you know, five, 6,000 passengers have to get on board the ship. This is not just, okay, everybody just line up like over there and we'll get to you one at a time. You can't do that. You need a modern facility to handle this modern ship. So, so we have a question now. This one, uh, we have a question coming in. This one says, uh, will the ship have a new edge cabin design? That's a great question. So the edge cabin design is referring to Celebrity Cruises, which of course is Royal Caribbean's sister company. And they just announced for the Celebrity Edge, which is like real, which is Celebrity's new, awesome, amazing, can't believe they put that on a cruise ship uh, idea. Now Royal Caribbean, there's two things to keep in mind. Number one, we don't have very few details about Symphony of the Seas other than some basics, right? And they haven't gone to the point of staterooms and going to that level of detail. So the answer to your question directly, no, we don't know. I mean, do I expect it to? Well, I don't know. I'm not... Uh, I've been known to be wrong many times, but uh, I don't expect it to be the case. Uh, I think, and the reason being, you know, giving celebrity a little bit of an edge there, no pun intended, like just like lowercase <laughs> e. Um, but I think that it's, it's, it's you know, I, but then again, that being said, a lot of times there's a lot of cross pollination between Royal Caribbean and celebrity. I mean, if you look at, as a classic example, look at Royal Caribbean's quantum class ships, right? Anthem of the Seas, Quantum of the Seas, Ovation of the Seas. If you look at the ship, if you didn't know any better, and if you've seen celebrity ships before, you would say, that's a celebrity looking ship right there. There's a lot of ideas borrowed and shared. That's the nature of the companies. It's a lot like cars, right? If you know, like as an example, General Motors makes Chevrolet, uh, Buick and, and Corvette and Cadillac. 
but you know what? There's a lot of elements that are shared between the companies because that's, you know, why not? If they, if they if they get something that works well for them, that's what works. And a lot of times they'll share those kind of ideas. So could I see some things from Celebrity Edge coming over? I could totally see that happening, but uh, we don't know any specifics quite yet. So Michael Franklin Poole wants to know, based on the photos that he's seen from uh, from the shipyard, the balcony cabins um, will be the same. Is that uh, is that about right? Yeah, I mean, a lot from what we've seen on some of the photos, we've been posting photo updates at RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com with some of the construction updates and photos from both that Royal Caribbean's been releasing and some other uh, folks have been taking of the ship. And it, I mean, a lot of it, when you're talking about a fourth ship in a class, which is the case here with Symphony of the Seasons, the fourth Oasis class ship, there's not gonna be a whole lot of variation in the sense of like, they're not gonna like totally like redo the whole thing, right? There are gonna be some new uh, key uh differences in there because royal caribbean knows as much again you know to kind of they want to get people excited for it um but you know they're not going to tear up the whole blueprints and start over again necessarily if this were a new class of ships if we're talking joe when you and i are talking about this in about five years or so um about the icon class that is all bets are off and that is like wow that's you know that's a whole new class of ships and then yes i could totally see a lot of the edge class thing from celebrity and almost any other idea you can think of, because when they come with a new ship class, they're coming up with whole new ideas. They're starting from scratch, literally. And I think that's going to be a, a whole different ballgame. So do we think, and now this, and this question comes in from uh, I am John Bammer on Periscope. He wants to know with the symphony being larger than the Harmony, um, do we think that the Oasis uh, class will be, do, do we think it's going to be larger or is there a limit or? That's a great question. John, what's up, man? I, I mean, they're, they're incrementally larger, right? When we say, I mean, Symphony is larger than Harmony and Harmony is larger than Allure and Allure is larger than Oasis. Uh, but, you know, we're talking about, you know, a couple of feet here or there, not like, you know, hundreds of feet or anything like that. It's just kind of just a, I think it's really just a marketing decision. Like, you know, if we call it the largest cruise ship in the world, we're gonna get a lot of attention about it because second largest cruise ship in the world doesn't nearly do as well with our focus groups. So. There's, I mean, I'm not even a marketing, but I at least I know that part. <laughs> so I think that's very much part of it. Now, John's probably alluding to, well, they build a ship that's going to be double the size of that or any, or whatever. And you know what? This is what I always tell people is if you look back at cruising 15 years ago, 10 years ago, what the biggest cruise ship in the world was at that point, I mean, it blows it out of the water. I mean, Sovereign of the Seas was the first mega ship. And now when you say mega ship and Sovereign of the Seas, people laugh. Laugh, Joe, for, for effect, please. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You see, people laugh, and oh, yes. and and there you go. It's 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 uh, you never know. So uh, I think the industry definitely moving that direction because obviously new new techniques, new construction elements. They can it all comes together to help uh, uh, make a ship be able to support that kind of a size ship. You're absolutely right, and uh, you know, that the cruising is like it's it, it's definitely in a it, it's definitely a different place than it was like 10, 15 years ago. More people now, like in the past 10 or 15 years, cruises have become, I feel like they've become so more, so much more affordable, so much bang for your buck, so to speak, that that people are going on cruises so much. They're like, I mean, it's, that's their preferred vacation now is to take a cruise, it seems. Heck yeah. Yeah. So now this, this ship's going to be starting off in Europe. How long is it going to take before it comes from Europe to the United States? Well, it's going to go, it debuts in about April 2018, and then November, uh, she'll be over in the United States. And that's pretty typical. That's almost exactly what Harmony of the Season when she debuted. Because, and the reason being, well, they're being, it's being built in Europe. It's being built, built in STX France, which is the shipyard uh, over there. And uh, since it's already in Europe, you know, why not get some money out of there, get some attention? And, you know, it's, it makes sense to have a European cruising season there. And then she'll come over here right in November. Uh, for and then and inevitably stay here until for the foreseeable future. Well, that's a good time of year to come over here. We have good weather in Florida in November, generally speaking. Heck yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, it's wonderful. Yeah. So we got a question. Uh, this one comes in from Periscope. Um, this is uh, Bob32128. He wants to know, will the Florida cruise universe move from Miami to Port Canaveral? That's a good question. And what's up, Bob? I will tell you that once upon a time, Miami was the cruising capital. It still kind of is to some extent. But if you remember, Royal Caribbean really made big headlines when they put Oasis of the Seas in Fort Lauderdale, Port Everglades, just up the up 95 from there. And because traditionally when cruise ships 
debut, whether it's Royal Caribbean, Carnival, or Norwegian, anybody, you debut in Miami. That's it's like I, I can't think of a metaphor that's appropriate. So I'm just going to ignore the fact that I was trying to go for a metaphor. And it's it's just it's where you put new ships. And then subsequent to that, we've seen well, you can put in other places because you know money talks, and for a lot of places they can make you know some more money over there. Obviously, some other deals that are on the table. And so uh, can Port Canaveral be that place? Sure, it can. I'm not sure it will necessarily, um, just because I think Miami is just the natural, and South Florida in general, is the naturally built cruise area. I mean, it's so close, it's so much closer to the, the, a lot of the destinations people are going to. And I know it's like a negligible difference, Bob, because we're talking about, you know, a couple more hours at sea, but for a lot of these ships where, you know, it's, it's about economics, it's about how much fuel you're using and getting to these places, that's part of it, and it all kind of comes together. So I'm not discounting the idea, Bob, but I'm not sure that it'll happen anytime soon. But again, you and I probably know about the same amount of information, so hard to say. <laughs> Fair enough. So Ron Hiller wants to know, well, will, with, the tension is, with the tensions in North Korea, do you think that Royal Caribbean is ever going to be moving ships toward that region, or do you think they're going to kind of just stay away from there? You know, it's a great question. Actually, Royal Caribbean talked about North Korea in their earnings call last week, last week, two weeks ago, whatever it was, a couple of days ago. And they um, uh, they, they mentioned that the uh, geopolitical events can cause issues with booking, because obviously if people read about this, they're like, what? I'm not going on a cruise over there. But that people's memories, A, are very short. And B, these things tend to kind of simmer down after a little bit, right? We've seen this before with Greece, we've seen this in North Africa. Uh, we saw it in um, in China a year or two ago where there were some issues between China and Japan and Korea and they were fighting amongst each other and yelling at each other, really. Um, so this has happened before. The good news though is that usually what happens is World Cup is pretty um, flexible in the way that they're going to uh, maneuver. I mean, I think Ron is kind of alluding to this idea that maybe they're going to pull out of China. I really don't think that's going to be the case at all. I mean, they're, Royal Caribbean's making a lot of money in China. Bottom line, it is a it is a booming cruise industry, and uh, there's just uh, you know the way it stands right now. I don't think any cruise line, including Royal Caribbean, would have any plans to get out of there. They may adjust itineraries here and there, but no, the Royal Caribbean is in there for the long haul. Well, good to know. Um, Kara from uh, Kara Vacay Times on Periscope. Wants to know what is on the docket um, as a new ship after Symphony. Do you know? Kara, what's going on? Actually, yes, we do have a little more information. Actually, it's, it's Quantum 4. So it's the fourth Quantum class ship. And appropriately enough, Royal Caribbean just made the announcement about that last week. About, again, two weeks ago. I, my, my timing, my sense of time. Where am I? Who am I? Where am I? Um, has been uh, Royal Caribbean announced that they're doing this Quantum Ultra class. So again, this is the fourth class fourth ship in the quantum class but in this case they are uh they're, they're kind of making a subclass if that makes any kind of sense where basically this ship is going to be a quantum class ship but it's gonna have a little something more than usual to distinguish yourself what Kara? it's a great question no one knows the answer to that rocker hasn't said anything we don't even know the name of the ship let alone features on board but we do know that it'll be called the quantum ultra class it'll debut 2019 so just about a year after symphony does and she's going straight over to uh, Asia and the Pacific region. She may spend her summer in the UK. Royal Caribbean CEO Michael Bailey alluded to that. They haven't quite made a decision yet, but she's destined to head over to uh, China, Australia. Basically, the same thing Ovation of the Seas did. Oh my goodness, you just said 2019, and I had to tell myself that the year now is 2017, and that's only two years away. Oh, I gosh. know, it's crazy. It, yeah, time flies too fast. This is why we take vacations so often. Oh. <laughs> you're going to miss out on the good stuff in life. So another question coming in. Michael Franklin Poole wants to know, Matt, do you have any uh, group cruises coming up? <laughs> Michael! What is going on? Yes, I do. We actually have a number on realcreamblog.com. We love taking cruises. We love taking cruises with other people that love taking cruises as well. Um, because nothing's better, and you know this, show than going on a cruise with other people that really enjoy going on a cruise. And we've got Absolutely. a number of different group cruises. Uh, we've got, we're going on Harmony of the Seas. The, currently the world's largest cruise ship in September of 2017, this September. And we've also got one on Symphony of the Seas booked for next year, next November. Joe, going to be one of the first people in the United States to go check her out. Very, very excited for that. Nice. I'd be excited, too. That sounds exciting. Take me with you. Pack me in your luggage if I can't get a ticket. 
<laughs> I, you make the big bucks. Right. You know how it is being a being a broadcaster. We make so much money. I mean, it's just oh, oh it's ridiculous. Easy yeah, absolutely. It's ridiculous <laughs> amount. Uh, it's a ridiculous amount of money. I love it. In fact, that's exactly how I'm going to phrase it. It's a ridiculous amount of money. Anyway. Yes. What? It, what's a mill times zero? Um. Well, I don't know. Last time, well, we saw how my, how did, well I did math a few minutes ago. Jeez. Um. <laughs> Last time I checked, it was zero, though. So, yeah. Well, I'm very excited for the Symphony of the Seas coming up. Um, I don't know if we have any more questions coming in from the audience. I don't think I have any more questions. That's that's uh, my my main question was about your coming to the United States and. Uh, yeah, yeah that's it's, a, there's some really cool things coming, Joe. Um, also on board, but do you know some details about it? It will have the ultimate abyss slide uh, with a new twist. The ultimate abyss is that ten story. It's a dry slide, not a water slide. So you go on one of the little mats and you go down there. But that first showed up on Harmony of the Season. It's going to be on Symphony, but with a new twist. So something will be different about it, which will be kind of cool. And there will be some other Royal Caribbean staples. It'll have a Flowrider Surf Simulator, Rock Climbing Wall, uh, Water Slides, which I love. And I know Michael Poole loves them as well. Who doesn't love a good water slide, right? Exactly. Um, Splash Away Bay, Aqua Park, Ice Skating, the Spa. So you got plenty of great things. And in terms of dining, because it's all about the food, baby. Uh, yeah. Chops Grill, Jamie's Italian, Izumi, the Japanese cuisine, Vintage's Wine Bar, Solarium Bistro, and cannot forget, cannot talk enough about the amazing, the only, Sabor will be on board as well. So, And, of course, there'll probably be some other new restaurants and new opportunities there, too. So there's a lot to be excited about. I think as a Royal Caribbean fan, if anyone who enjoys the latest and greatest like I do, there's so many great things uh, that are going to be on this ship, and I'm just so excited. It, like. Is it 2018 yet? Can we can we go on this? Well, if we sleep long enough, I suppose it will be 2018. I can try my best, but <laughs> I tried sleeping enough last night. It was always like 15 hours. It got me through till this morning. Well, yeah. Well, Matt, you Matt, I want to thank you very much. Um, and don't forget, guys, Matt is live every day on RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Um, thank you, Matt. Thank you so much, Matt. I greatly appreciate it. Hey. My pleasure, dude. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me on here. Well, thank you for being my co-host. I will see you next time. <laughs> All right. Thanks, so now it's time for our photo of the week segment, our, our show us your face segment. Um, this week's photo is going to come from the Royal Caribbean Facebook cruise group, and it features Ronnie Cop's daughter, seen here, learning to play the slots. That is adorable. <laughs> Oh my goodness. And you thought, I, I always thought they had to be 21 to gamble on cruise ships, but I guess I was wrong. Oh my goodness. She, look, she looks like she, she looks like she knows what she's doing almost. Like she's trying to say with her face, she's trying to say, watch dad, I'll win. Oh my goodness. That's adorable. All right. So, uh, <laughs> Can't get over this one. Okay, so if you have a fun photo, you need to send it into photos at cruiseweek.tv, and maybe we're going to be able to feature you on the show. Uh, send in more photos like this. This is <laughs> it's too cute. Oh my gosh! So we live stream on very many platforms. Facebook is one. Uh, YouTube, of course, but also Periscope. And I want to thank Kathy from RC Periscopers Group for helping us out over in the chat room, keeping order there. If you want to see a lot of live streams from people on the ships, head over to RC Periscopers group on Facebook for a list. Also, if you like our shows, you may want to consider joining the Cruise Week Inner Circle. You can find out more by going to cruiseweek.tv slash support. And with your support, it helps us bring you great videos and guests and uh, also helps to raise money um, to bring five new cruisers on a trip of a lifetime. So head over to cruiseweek.tv slash support to see, um, all that is to offer over there. So next week, Matt is going to be back with Shally, uh, Jess, uh, uh, sorry, Shally, Jess from the U S and the man in charge at carnival for finding and booking all of those great acts and shows that you see on the ships. Uh, we get to talk to Adam. I'm hoping I'm not butchering this name, Adam Hefner. And we find out just what uh, just what that job is all about and how they choose the acts that you guys get to see. Um, and that's about wrapping up today's show. So without any further ado, we'll see you guys next week, and I'll see you on the ships. <laughs>